And welcome back. Well, about 7 million people are living with a knee or hip replacement. It's very common for a surgery. Our next guest says he's now using a robotic tool to do total knee replacement and patients are experiencing less pain and a quicker recovery. Sounds good, right? Dr. Jesse Bowens is an orthopedic surgeon with Wisconsin Bone and Joint and he's here with more on this new technology. Good to see you. Thank you very much for having me, Tiffany. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for being here. I think this, I mean, speaks to so many people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people know someone who's having trouble with their knees oh, absolutely. or their hips, yeah. but knees particular like what what is arthritis and and why is it so commonly in the knees so that's a really good question so there are many different reasons for people who have arthritis sometimes it's genetic sometimes they've had previous history of trauma to their knee or sometimes it's just general wear and tear from from overuse uh, arthritis is really thinning of the cartilage which is the lining on the end of the bone so I had a fellowship director that I always told patients that the tread on the tire, yeah. you know, it's wearing of the tread on the tire that really is arthritis. And so once you start to wear the cartilage down, you actually start to grind bone up against bone. And that's what really becomes painful for patients who have arthritis of the knee. So you can see that the graphic there sort of displays that the, the red area is where the cartilage has worn. Oh. And it really starts to grind the bone that's underneath that cartilage on bone on, on the other side of the, of the joint. And, and that becomes really painful for a patient. So it's not something that goes into your joint, it's the emptiness in yep, the joint. Yep, it's, it's the cartilage that is worn and now you have bone that is underneath that cartilage, rubbing on bone that is underneath the cartilage on the other side of the joint. And that causes a lot of pain, swelling, inflammation, and stiffness that patients tend to experience who have arthritis. So those are the symptoms. You know you have it if you're feeling those things. Those are, you know those feelings in yep. your knee. Yep. Um, how about different treatment options? Because a lot of people are gonna say, okay, uh, what do I do? Do I do cortisone? Sure. You know, what do, where do I start if so I'm the, suffering from knee pain? So I really break it down into three main tiers of treatment options. So the first option is more conservative. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't really involve any invasive type procedures or anything. Uh, we recommend initially physical therapy, range of motion, strengthening of your lower extremity and sometimes we prescribe anti-inflammatory ma pain medications for you to take. Okay. The second tier is a slightly more invasive although not ne necessarily surgery yet but it involves injecting cortisone or the gel shot into the knee. That usually gives you a little bit of time, buys you some some relief. Uh, and so can it's usually not permanent? Usually not. It, okay. it, those tend to wear off after time mm -hmm. and they become less and less effective the more you use them. Mm -hmm. And ultimately the final solution after that is a knee replacement surgery where you actually take the diseased portion of the joint out and replace it with, with metal. I think a lot of people want to try and avoid surgery, but oftentimes it's not avo avoidable. You know, if you want to have a, a productive, active life and be able to do things yep. again, why live in the pain? Yep. Um, I know you've got this, uh, it's called the Mako Robotic Arm yes. Assisted yep. Surgery. So I want to know how it differs from a, a manual knee surgery. Because a lot of people probably yep. haven't heard some of these terms with their doctors. Well, that's a really good question you have there, Tiffany. So the manual total knee replacement, which has been around for for a, a long time, is, is really using external and internal landmarks to give us our best guess how to orientate the components to fit your knee. Okay. And sometimes we know that that is about 19% of the time we miss our target. So 19% oh. of the time we're greater than three degrees from what our, our preoperative surgical plan is. Okay. And sometimes that translates into patient dissatisfaction or early revision required from the surgery. Like having to do another touch-up surgery Exactly, or yep. Okay. And sometimes it can be perceived as instability and, and pain and discomfort by the patients as well. So the Mako robotic platform is a way to sort of solve that problem and reduce the outliers to, to give you a more consistent and reproducible surgery. So is it a, a robot doing the surgery? The is robot doesn't do the surgery, the robot helps with the surgery. Okay. So I, the, the surgeon still gets to do the surgery, the robot just comes in and allows you to have an accurate plan. It makes the, it makes the cuts and shapes your femur and your tibia for the implants that we use very accurately and exactly as we intend to put them in. Do you like it? I love it. Do it's, you? It's, it's a, it, it is a lot of fun. Yeah. Like I think as, as, as a patient, you know, it's kind of one of those things like you always get nervous about robots, but like the accuracy, like you yeah. said, that, that percentage of error is probably going down significantly. It's really unmatched. I, I'll tell you yeah. the truth. So when I did my fellowship, we had, we had one room all day where we did manual knees and we had one room all day where we did robotic knees and you could actually, as a surgeon, feel a difference really? of the quality of the knee replacement that you did between the manual versus the robotic. And how about the length of, of either recovery or the ability for that surgery to last for someone? Was there a difference in that too? Yeah, I, I saw that there was an enhanced recovery. So yeah. if people required less physical therapy prior to them being discharged. They had better knee flexion after surgery um, and they had uh, less narcotic requirements after surgery, which is a big thing too, because thing. narcotics make you sleepy and, and sick and they don't really make you feel all that well. So the, the, the amount we can minimize of that is, is really beneficial. So That's great. Yep. If somebody's 
having issues with their knees. They've probably been living with it for a long time. Mm -hmm. What can they do? They can come meet with you and you, you can look at it. Yeah, absolutely. It yeah, so so uh, feel free to schedule an appointment with me at any point in okay. time. I'm always happy to meet with someone no matter what stage of the game they're at, yeah. whether it's early arthritis or it's end stage arthritis where they're willing to consider treatment options. Okay. I'll sit and discuss with them uh, whatever it is that, that we're ready to discuss at the point in time. And we don't necessarily offer invasive surgery right away. We, we tend to start with the more conservative measures first. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. See how it's working so you can get back to being active. Here's how people can contact you yep. so they can get a hold of it. You've got this joint pain seminar coming up with Wisconsin Bone and yep. Joint. It's Saturday, next Saturday, the 21st. It's at 9 a.m. It's at the Sheraton in Brookfield. The phone number to call is 414-257-2525. And the website to learn more is wiskboneandjoint.com. But that's where you can find um, Dr. Bowens as well at that joint pain seminar, as well as Wisconsin Bone and Joint. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it.